Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds. Got Luke Simons, like diamonds. Talking about shrimp, like diamonds. We're talking about two different types of shrimp. Talking about artificial shrimp, like our power prawn, USA, senior and junior, and then live shrimp. There's been a lot of questions about when to use which one, which one's best. And, um, and for those of you that saw one of our Facebook posts here last week, caught two really nice over slot snook using a power prawn in almost the middle of the day. It was 90 degrees out. Sun was high up and this was the day after a full moon. And everyone's like, oh man, I, I, you know, I can't believe you're, you're doing that. And so we want to break down when a, a fake shrimp like a power prawn is going to actually beat and we would prefer it over live shrimp and vice versa. And so I want to start off, Luke, by talking about absolute beginners, because I think this is where I've seen some beginners end up getting really, really frustrated is they they see what our coaches do and what a lot of our members do and, and just the general public catching really nice redfish and speckled trout and snook and flounder on these artificial lures. And, and they think that's the only way to do it. And, and they try to do it and, and they get skunked because it's not just about the shrimp. It's you got to rig it correctly. You have to have the right depth control. You even have to know how to position your boat or your kayak correctly. There's all these little variables that they don't understand yet. And they get really, really frustrated. And so I just want to start off by saying there is absolutely nothing wrong with using live shrimp or frozen shrimp, if you're, especially if you're a beginner. And in fact, I would actually say do that first to at least just get the, the feel of it and figuring out where the fish are, et cetera, uh, you know, going to bridge pilings or docks. If I had kids with me, I would not be using a power prawn. Uh, you know, with, with a seven-year-old, I, I would get some live or frozen shrimp. So uh, I, 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 and I assume you're nodding, you agree with that in terms of the beginners, because I kind of want to start there and throw that out there. Yeah, I agree with most of that. And a lot of it comes down to, you know, first of all, what you're targeting. And like, if you're going after just, just max quantity of fish, we're just trying to catch something. You don't care really what it is. Live shrimp is, is going to be it because everything eats live shrimp, big and small. You can even catch like little tiny pinfish or snapper and also a big fish as well. So you can have a little bit of everything. Uh, where lures come into play, especially, first of all, you have to be a good caster and you have to, to put some thought into rigging, right? Rig it right for the depth, but that, I guess, rigging uh, depth control really is important with uh, with live and, and lures. But, but with lures, it just takes an extra level of, uh, I would say, of thought and, and skill. And uh, it's not a lot. It's not a lot. It's not, it's not like you have to spend years doing it. It just takes a little bit of coaching and then going out and using it. So the, the, the core benefit of live shrimp is that it just, everything eats it, right. You go out there and just, just catch whatever, if there's any predator in the area and you soak it in front of their face, they're likely going to eat it. Uh, whereas artificial lures, uh, you know, you have to actually make the lure work. Like here's uh, here's one of our, our, uh, our shrimp lures here, the power prom USA, it looks great, right? It looks very, very close to a real shrimp that obviously was designed uh, based on an actual shrimp, but you need to rig it properly and just need to, to work a little bit to, to give it the motion that a natural shrimp would have to trigger the strike. Once you do master this, it's game changing. Now you can actually cover water because the, the core benefit of lures is that you can cover more water, right? You can cast this all day long and it's not going to fall off the hook where if you cast a live shrimp probably three times, especially if you cast it hard, it's, uh, it's gone. So lures help you catch, cover more water. Live shrimp helps you just maximize the, the quantity of fish. I would say is the, the elevator, uh, the, the, the overview, if you will. Yep. So let's, let's dive a little bit deeper into that. Let's start with the, um, you know, the pros and cons of these. You, you hit a couple of them. I'd also say that if I was targeting bigger fish, like, like we've done in, in not all cases, but in, in some cases going after trophy snook and, and redfish and, and even trout flounder that lures sometimes can be beneficial because especially if you have a four and a half inch prawn you're not going to have the same issues you do with a fake or i mean a, a live shrimp meaning catfish and little pinfish and all like you know you've done some of those underwater videos and you see all the little things that just they're, they're the shrimp stealers right it's crazy how many shrimp you have to go through to catch a decent sized fish. And, uh, and it can be really, really tough if you're trying to target big fish. And so to back to Luke's point, using live shrimp, if you're just wanting to get a ton of numbers, you know, and these could be a lot of smalls could be a ton of catfish, definitely have some uh, D hookers on the on the boat or kayak with you. 
just be prepared to catch a bunch of kind of like little junk fish. Uh, whereas when we fish with power prawns, I, I don't, I don't remember catching any catfish. Um, right. And, and it happens uh, every once in a while. Just, it's just not, not, not any, it's not even close to the amount of, of catfish and, no. and little small pinfish you get with, uh, with, with live bait. Cause I, and I was doing, um, some tests. I really wanted to get a sheep set. I've done a lot of underwater filming and, and just watching fish eat, uh, eat baits in most cases shrimp because everything likes it but I've been trying to get sheep's head and, and so I'll put the camera down I'll drop the shrimp right in front of it so you can actually see what happens and it is shocking how fast the little bait stealers uh, in, in most cases it's pinfish sometimes it's small mangrove snapper but in most cases especially if you drop in the same spot a couple times it's literally like 20 seconds before that bait is just getting attacked by all that little junk stuff in most cases it'll knock it off the hook because and yeah, those, those fish's mouths are so small, it's actually hard to hook them. So that's usually what happens. If you, if you drop a live shrimp down and it's gone really quick, which happens a lot, especially if you're fishing docks or on reefs and areas with a lot of life, there's just a lot of little small fish down there that are super aggressive. And, and they will be on that in, again, in most cases, like under 20 seconds. And so there's really not a lot of time for that bigger predator to, uh, to, to really hone in and, and, and get that meal. Uh, conversely, if you're throwing a, a lure, right, those little junk fish will hit it, but they're not going to get hooked, right? This is a big hook. Um, you can rig it weedless just to guarantee that, that none of them accidentally get snagged. And so those fish will be messing with it, but they can't get it. They're not going to ruin it. They're not going to knock it off the hook. And then as you retrieve it, now this lure has a, a little trail of, uh, of chum, if you will, like little pinfish and stuff that's following it. And that bigger fish will see the action, go in there and strike your lure. And so by far the average fish size on on lures like this is bigger than using live shrimp is what i found uh right. fishing the same area right fishing docks i've been i've been using these a lot around docks and bridges and and the average fish size is absolutely bigger with these lures compared to live shrimp just because live shrimp just gets dominated by whatever sees it first so like whereas this will kind stuff. of weed through the small stuff and uh and the fact that it's realistic and has good action as long as it's rigged and used properly, this thing is absolutely amazing. This is by far my most trusted lure now. Yep, I agree. And then cake a little Dr. Juice saltwater slam sun on there and uh, kitty bar the doors. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, and it's uh, and again for many years I really wasn't a big fan of shrimp lures, and um, but I always knew that live shrimp obviously will catch everything. And and the the more I've been using. Uh, and in over the last couple of years, we've been testing on a bunch of different lures, um, you know, shrimp lures specifically. And, uh, and it seems like the ones with, with all like the frills where have a lot of those like super realistic shrimp that have like every leg and every, all the antenna, everything attack. It's like some of like works of art. Um, those, the ones with the appendages seem to actually um, not do quite as well. Um, it seems like it's the motion of the water and, and in particular, the glide down. So, um, so this, this is a nice streamlined shrimp profile and that most of the strikes happens after the bump. Then as it's gliding down, it looks just like a natural shrimp going back down to the bottom and it just gets absolutely thumped. So I, I actually recommend against those, those lures with all the frills, just get a nice streamlined shrimp lure and, uh, and, and make sure to rig it properly. And, and, uh, and it can be, it's, it really is amazing how, how effective it is, particularly if you're fooling the bigger fish. Yeah. I haven't seen anything that works as well as the power prawn and, for those of you that have heard the story, I'll just kind of rehash it for, uh, for everyone. But this guy, Marcos was still one of our members, but he was fishing a lot down in South Florida, like Chukaluski area, all the way down to Flamingo and catching these Mondo, like 40 plus inch snook and even winning tournaments, like against full-time guides who were using live bait. And all he was using was this fake shrimp. And we, we were like scratching our heads saying there's no way, right? Just like a lot of you maybe who've never caught a big fish using a fake lure of any kind. Cause we hear that we see those comments like in Facebook, no way you guys caught that on, on that. Of course, we all have billions of hours of video footage showing that lures catch all these fish. Uh, but there's still people who just, who haven't done it and they can't conceive it yet. And so even we were skeptical of her like, man, no way. And so we went down and spent two full days with him and heard the whole story about how they only use shrimp lures down in Brazil, where he's from, you know, for they have Rabalo down there, which is essentially the same thing as a snook. 
and we were blown away when we saw the results. So we fished with him for, for a day and a half. And, uh, I mean, blown away. We both caught Mondo over slot, you know, 40 inch snook using this same type of lure. And so we've now made some tweaks, things that we thought needed to, to improve upon and uh, now, you know, make them in the, in the USA and, uh, holy smokes. Uh, I mean, the testimonials on our insider club, it, it's every day. And we have some people that, you know, are not in the club and just buying them. It's now become our number one selling loot, even more so than slam shady, uh, you know, in, in the same time frame is a, uh, is a release and slam shady was just like this, as, as you know, and now the slam shady has been licensed to Z man and it's in every bass pro shop and Walmart. It's crazy. And yet this power prawn is, is even outselling that. Uh, right now. And so it is crazy how effective it works. Luke, let's talk about the power prawn senior, which is the, the big boy, the what four and a half inch. And then. Yeah. So the, the original one, the senior, which called the original is 4.3 inches. And that's uh that's this guy right here. And so, and this is what I, I, this is my favorite for, for going after the bigger fish. It just weeds out the smaller, you know, really just weeds out the smaller and the other one is a junior and it's three and a half inches just so you can see the differences you know this one probably looks a little bit bigger because it's rigged on a jig head but uh but but both are the same you know same sleek design it's really uh it's really a darting type lure that actually looks like a shrimp it has the eyes on there has the tail all proportional even has the little ridges you can kind of look closely and see the ridges in it um for for shallow water like for skipping under docks and mangroves this bigger one rigged on a hoss helix hook is absolutely amazing by far my favorite lure for that type of fishing. It just consistently catches fish. Most importantly, it consistently gets the bigger fish. And, uh, and one unique thing about this type of, of lure is that it's designed for the weighted hooks, right? It has the underbelly slot for the weighted hooks. So it fits great there. And, and this hook in particular is what it was designed for. And we also put together some jig heads. These are the football jig heads. So and they now go awesome. to an ounce. This is, this is the ouncer. And so this, you can now go off to, to reefs, um, to deeper, you know, deeper channels like this, this ounce, this ounce one will go up, I would say up to 80 to even hundred feet if it, as long as there's not a lot of current. Um, I just posted a report from down in, the, in Marco, we we're in 45 feet of water and I caught multiple keeper red grouper, um, caught a cobia, giant cuda. I ended up catching 10 species on this one lure. In that case, I had the, the same jig head, but at the three quarter ounce. So long story short, just unique in the fact that you can have one lure and cover anywhere from, you know, from eight inches to, to 80 plus feet, as long as you have the right rigging stuff. And this football shape jig head is what I found to be the best because it, first of all, just kind of, it kind of keeps it keeled. So as we used to use a round ball jig head and, uh, and then I started testing this out and my, my strike ratio went up. And I think what it happens, first of all, it just looks good in the water, but the fact that it's keeled when it hits the bottom, if there's current, it, it, you know, if it's round, the current is going to turn it over on its side and just looks, it just doesn't look natural. Right, a natural shrimp, when it hits the bottom, it stays upright. And so this, this football shaped jig head, I believe that's why the, the results seem to be better. Um, so now we have these football jig heads in all sizes, just so again, you can cover the shallow water um, and then down to the deep stuff as well. And when we went fishing uh, here recently with those, those big snook, I had a, the, just a normal Z-Man, a quarter ounce jig head on the power prawn. Luke was using the football and was getting more fish. Uh, I had a couple of there's little junk fish. He was getting grouper, got that big 39 inch snug. And so I was like, ah, oh. and I ended up getting broken off a Spanish mackerel hit mine. So I was like, all right, I, I gotta, I gotta re-rig. And then I went with the football style and I think it was the second cast uh ended up getting that that big uh, overslot snook and then just shortly after that like another dock down get another one uh it was crazy all from that football so i am certainly a, a believer and uh, and i know for sure that's what we were using on some of the offshore trips and uh, that's what i love about that lure you can use it in two feet of water you know going after tailing redfish i mean that's what justin some of the coaches have done he put a little dr juice saltwater slamson on there and use that hoss uh, helix the the weedless version and you're catching fish in two feet of water to 70 feet of water. Uh, crazy how effective this sucker is. And, and that's why I, and we've been with guides like Hollywood Johnson, you know, his company is called Florida Keys Fun Fishing. They have five boats in the fleet and really their bread and butter is family. 
meaning they're not going out there. They they do on occasion, but their their main customer is not someone who's coming down to the Keys to fly fish for tarpon. They're really just trying to get families to go out there, have fun, create some some memories. And so you can imagine how many shrimp they go through because that is their deal. And we've taken a bunch of these power prawns down to him and he's buying more and more and more of them. He's like, this is actually saving me money. He's like, I can still put some sin on that and drop those down in the same areas that I was dropping 15, 20 shrimp just to get a fish on because they were getting annihilated. And I can catch some decent size like keeper mangrove snapper and uh, and even grouper. And and man, I'm I'm using the same shrimp, you know, the the whole the whole day some, some in some cases. Uh, they do last a long time, especially if you're just dropping them, you know, straight down and not skipping them or ripping them through mangroves and stuff like that. Uh, but it's amazing. And so even guides are starting to uh, to get on this power prawn uh, phase, if you will. And uh, so cool. I, uh, I I was blown away when I, I heard from him saying, man, this is this could be game changing for my guide business in terms of saving me money over live shrimp just because they go through so many. And you mentioned casting, right? If there are times you're casting, sure, you can cast live shrimp, but that just increases the chance that it's going to fly off. And a lot of times you don't have enough weight. And so you can't cast very far. Whereas this thing, I mean, you, you put a quarter ounce jig head, you can cast it a country mile and it skips well. Uh, you Cause you can skip underneath docks where it's really tough to skip a live shrimp underneath the dock, or it's a whole lot tougher. Uh, there are so many advantages. Yeah. And, and just, just shrimp in general for many years, I, I was, uh, and I still do use a lot of paddle tails and I'll, I'll talk about at the end, you know, when to use a shrimp versus a paddle tail, at least, at least my decision factor, but uh, I would rarely use shrimp lures. And since I started, I have absolutely seen an increase in the average fish size, the increase in the amount of overslot snook and overslot redfish I've been catching with them. And it just seems like the bigger fish in most cases get a little bit more turned off with uh, with a lot of vibration especially if you're fishing like moderately clear to clear water and so in that situation just a, a lure that looks realistic that has some good darting motion without a whole lot of vibration has the advantage at least that's what i've seen so far and and just seeing reports from members who are catching their personal best it's it's becoming with this this lure and again in so many cases and so uh, i reckon if you're not using shrimp lures i recommend giving them a try um, they, first of all, that they, they were great, uh, but most importantly is they, they specifically are good for catching the bigger fish in, uh, in many cases. You know, yes, these are awesome. I'd be lying if I said this is the only good, good shrimp lure. This is just the best that, that I've found so far. We did a lot of testing, a lot of thought went into the design of it. Uh, we, again, purposely made it sleek so that it has a better gliding motion and then also skips better. So this is the best skipping and gliding shrimp lure that I've ever seen. And, uh, and again, that's the reason why I've, I've, I've just personally been been catching more fish per trip, like really more fish per hour of fishing using this shrimp lure than any other lure that I've used. Whether I'm fishing the shallows, I did a test on the DOA shrimp versus the uh, the uh, this, the Power Prawn Junior. And so because they're the same size, they're exactly three and a half inches, similar color, similar size, keeping under the mangroves. And the Junior just flat out had the advantage because they, I can rig it weedless, right? And most of the strikes with the with the DOAs, yes, the DOA was catching fish every trip, but pretty much all the strikes happen on the drop. Like it, it looked good during the drop. It has all the little appendages, um, looks good on the drop, but it doesn't dart very well. And so, and so in many cases, I seem to have most of my sight fishing chances when I had the, the rod with the DOA shrimp. I was doing three cast one, three cast the other, and just kept doing that for multiple trips. And I had a lot of sight fishing opportunities with the DOA. And so when I would cast over the fish and retrieve it towards it, I spooked almost all of them. Actually, I did spook all of them. And so, uh, and I had one shot in the last trip with the, uh, the Power Prom Junior and I, you know, cast over it, retrieved it towards, and it came up and smacked it. So uh, long story short, just the, the ability to, to cover water uh, where you don't have to, to, you know, have the current take it. This can actually be retrieved fairly quickly. It works good slow, but also can we work fast. So just uh, long story short, just the most versatile, uh, shrimp lure that I've seen so far. Yep. And most of those DOAs and the, uh, what's the other one that starts with the, the V I'm blanking on it right now. Voodoo. I mean, a lot of these shrimp, you know, they come pre-rigged with, you know, one jig head. I know you talked about it, but that, I don't think people realize like you're now stuck fishing one type of column of water for the most part, if you really want to do it effectively. Whereas this, I mean, you, that's why we have these football jig heads and what, how many sizes now? Um, 
Yeah, eighth, uh, eight. eighth quarter, <laughs> half, three quarter an ounce, and we're gonna we're gonna be adding to it. Couple but more, uh, yeah, yeah it's a, now you can really segment exactly what depth you wanted. We obviously have a chart for for the depth range that each size is best for. So we we have all that, and and we even have an entire course on how to use how to rig everything, uh, when to use it, when not to use it. Just as importantly, just so that you can maximize your time in the water. We're not going to be here and and, uh, and and try to claim that this is the best lure in 100 percent of situations. That would if anybody says that, run away quickly. Yep. Uh, but there are many situations where it is the best, and and so I did again highly recommend at least having it in the arsenal. That's a, a big regret that I that I have for uh, for many years. I did not really, I, I literally did not use shrimp lures for many years, and now I'm kicking myself. Yep. And so you could find these at fishstrong.com, and of course our insider members save. 20% off that and the Hoss Helix hooks and and really we have little bundles for it and we've listened to you as well you know we started off with the natural color and then we added slam shady now we have a few more colors that we just added to the power prawn arsenal and a question that comes up a lot is hey are you guys going to be able to get like a chartreuse tail a lot of our Texas and Louisiana members are asking for that and the answer is yes we're working on that as we speak. It'll be this year. Everything's taking still longer than uh, than we would like, but uh, and that's like a whole new new mold. Uh, just so you know, it's not as simple as just snapping your fingers and having chartreuse tail on there. So it is a, a whole separate mold because as we're you know injecting these things with colors, you almost have to have like different cavities for each little part. And so we'll have all that. So a whole lot more colors coming now that we, uh, we know this thing absolutely works. And, you know, the color, uh, I don't, I don't know how much of a difference it makes, you know, personally on, uh, on the shrimp. Uh, that one day that we went out, Luke and I both caught monster snook and Luke was using the slam shady color and I was using the natural color and we both caught fish all day long. And so uh, I, I would say get both. Uh, Cause there are been, there are some times where you do want to have different colors. I saw, one of our members just sent me a report here today about uh, a study for, uh, I believe it was musky. Did you see that, Luke? About I didn't see that. Lure colors for uh, for musky. And uh, guess what was number one for any type of clear or even remotely clear water? I think white. White, white. And, and if you could have a little, it said like a little gold in there. I mean, that was like the next level. And then I went all the way to like black for like really, really crazy stained, dirty water. Uh, but it was basically white or black or some type of gold, maybe pink, uh, depending on some of their level. I'm, I'm going to, I'll forward you over the little study, but I thought that was uh, interesting. Uh, but white, and that's the reason why that Slam Shady continues to sell, continues to just keep working. Uh, it just flat out gets the job done and, uh, yeah, and for, science and even it, proves it. Yeah, I was going to say, for those who don't know what Slam Shady color is, it's, it's basically a white a white background with both silver and gold flash like little small specks of flash so that way it's it has been the most just the most well-rounded color that i've used for shrimp lures though i just i've been this is my go-to i for the for the shrimp in particular i like the natural but if i'm using the paddle tails it's always slam shade that's i don't cheat on it that's literally all i've used for the last two years and it's been amazing so to, to the decision point we'll talk about the, the two main decision points that we've brought up in this, uh, number one, live shrimp versus artificial shrimp. So, uh, live shrimp is best if you're going after sheep's head, if you're going after the you know kind of smaller snapper, and if you just want to go out and just just catch like have a kid out fishing and, and get them on as many fish as possible with the least amount of effort, live shrimp or even frozen shrimp yep. just sit, sitting on the bottom near structure, like near dock pilings, near bridge pilings, near kind of oysters or rocks that's gonna catch stuff. And, and you can use small chunks of it and little small hooks, and that's gonna significantly increase how many fish you catch. Because again, those little small stuff, they're usually gonna be on it in 20 seconds, <laughs> plus or minus, yeah. so you can catch a ton of them. However, if you're targeting redfish, sea trout, snook, flounder, and you don't wanna really mess with the, uh, the, I would say the, the small stuff, that's when the lures come into play, right? And, and the, the bigger the, the target fish, the bigger lures. So, this, this, this big one is what I use when I'm going after redfish and snook and, and trout as well. I, I really prefer not to mess with the smaller ones. So this bigger one will just weed out the smallers. The, uh, this junior is what I love for like triple tail and even dock fishing. I've been getting a surprisingly large amount of sheep's head. Uh, I still would not call this a sheep's head lure. Uh, I like the crabs better for sheep's head, but this will catch a, a lot of this, the snapper. Triple tail, absolutely love it, as I mentioned. And, uh, and this has just been good just to help increase the, the quantity of fish. Um, whereas again, the, the bigger one will just flat out 
flat out be the 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 one to weed out the most small fish. So um, as Joe mentioned, it, it's it's good to have a little bit of everything. Sometimes, especially in the summer, a lot of the shrimp are smaller, and so that's when it it is uh, it is good to have a smaller profile as well. But in, I've really been rocking the bigger one all in all seasons, uh, with, in all months, and it's worked. Um, the small one is usually again when I'm just really trying to to make sure that I like if I'm having a tough day and I need a guaranteed strike, I put that small one and bounce it near some dock pilings, and someone's gonna eat it. Yep. And you'll find that you'll actually save money per big fish caught using a power prawn over live shrimp. I mean, if you really look at it, same with live bait on how many actual bait fish or shrimp you have to go through to get like a keeper or an overslot fish. I mean, it can get crazy expensive and that's not including the rigs lost and, and all that stuff. And whereas we go out and yeah, you might get fewer fish caught for sure you know compared to just dropping a live shrimp down a dock piling but man we are catching big fish and we're usually using the same lure for many big fish uh, which is really really cool so like i said we have some bundles there as well for you that like to save even more money kind of get everything i mean the jig heads and definitely get some of the dr juice saltwater slams and that's another one we've done multiple podcasts on it so we don't have to belabor it but that stuff flat out works you drip a little bit there on both the shrimp and even the top of the leader line uh, right there, or even the jig head, uh, man, it, it flat out works. And uh, I mean, we have definitely seen our fish catching go up ever since that, uh, you know, we started using that stuff. So yep. power prawn, little Dr. Juice saltwater slam and the hoss hooks. And then the, what are the, the football jigs we have them in as of right now? And yeah, hoss, yeah the hoss footballs are in. Those are the ones that'll let you get fish the, the lures deep. That, that's again, the best lure I found so far with it. And then it's the hoss helix hooks. Are the are the shallow ones that, that where you can rig it weedless, but uh, but again as I mentioned, uh, nope. Last decision point that I wanted to cover before we're done, and so shrimp lure versus paddle tail, when to use one versus the other. So in my opinion, if the water is at least moderately clear to clear, it's shrimp lure. Uh, that's the that's the default. And then if I'm actually seeing fish down there and they're not striking it, then I'll go over to the paddle tail. In most cases, when it's clear, the the shrimp lure is what's going to get them to strike. Like when I'm Again, when Marco's going up, he's, he's getting a lot of his on the reefs. The water is usually at least moderately clear. Uh, I've been doing the dock fishings around St. Pete and even down in the Keys, the, the, the shrimp lure profiles have been it, uh, by far the best. Uh, but if the water is murky, right? If there's been a lot of silt in the water, a lot of rain or fishing zones with just a lot more, just, just murky water, then the paddle tails, right? Those paddle tails have a little bit more vibration. I don't actually, I do have some here. You know, this big old paddle tail, this tail will be kicking off a lot of vibration as it's going through the water, and that's going to help the fish find it. And so if the water's clear, though, those fish can see it perfectly well, and, and too much vibration is just unnatural and, and very clear, especially if it's clear and calm. So clear, clear and or calm shrimp, if it's churned up or murky, paddle tail. That's, that's, that's been my, just to keep it as simple as possible, that's what I go with. That's good. And that's why we keep all the above in our tackle bag. And you should too. Go over to fishstrong.com, pick up yours. And of course, if you're an insider member, make sure you're all logged in and get your discounts. And if you're not, what the heck are you waiting on? Now, not only do we have the discounts, we have the on the water fishery reports, and literally new ones going up every single day. And we also have the smart fishing spots. That's that new software and app that goes in your phone, tablet, laptop, et cetera, and is changing the way that we do our pre trip planning to find the fishing spots, the best ones in your area. It's, it's basically giving you the 90, 10 zone. And uh, just like anything, like Luke said earlier, there's, it's never just going to work hundred percent of the time, or it would almost be too easy, uh, but doggone, I want every possible shortcut there is. This is a massive shortcut to help you at least start eliminating the areas, you know, you shouldn't fish and start telling you, all right, here's the best areas that I should be targeting for this specific day, the specific tides, specific wind direction, et cetera. It just takes so much of the guesswork out and, and eliminates so much having to drive around. It should be saving you a ton of money on gas and, uh, and, and certainly just more tight lines you know, per, uh, per hour of fishing, which is the ultimate goal. So that's all part of the uh, insider club now with, uh, I don't know how many 33, 34,000 members strong. It's uh, exploded here the past uh, 30 days with the smart fishing spots. So uh, just one more reason to join. And of course, if, um, if you are not thrilled for any reason, if you don't think it's an amazing investment, we'll give you your money back anytime in the first year. So we've made it a complete no brainer 
irresistible offer to join us in the Insider Club. Yeah, I just wish everybody stood behind their their product for an entire year guarantee. Make mm-hmm. sure that we fulfill the promises. Catch more fish and save money in your tackle. If somehow you don't think the club helped you do both, get your full refund. Simple as that. That's it. Let's go over to saltstrong.com to join there. And then fishstrong.com is the online tackle store. So guys, appreciate you. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment in the blog post. That's the actual article, if you will, on saltstrong.com. Uh, we look at all those. They come to us versus YouTube. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But if you definitely want to make sure your comment gets into our inbox, go to saltstrong.com in the fishing tip section. That's where this blog post will be. You might already be watching it there. And at the bottom, you'll see an area to leave a comment. And that literally goes right to us. So we get to see all those. So let us know if you've had any luck with the power prawn or live shrimp, et cetera. If you have any questions on rigging, et cetera, we have videos for all of that. So uh, just let us know and we'd uh, be glad to point you in the right direction. Yep. Otherwise, well, yeah, talk to you on the next episode. Peace. See ya.